This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found on Gadget Geek show number 350, recorded on April 5th, 2018. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into the news reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Gadget Geeks studio. Here in a, I think they're expecting snow for us tomorrow. It's April 5th. Mike, you've got good weather down in Atlanta, but Mark, you're talking freezing, right? It was pretty cold for you. It recently? was t- 10 degrees below zero this morning Celsius when I woke up and minus 20 Celsius with wind chill. Welcome, welcome to April, Mike. Not so bad in Atlanta, right? No, we were in the mid 60s today, so it was a nice day today. Pretty nice, of course. Uh, opposite uh, ends of the uh, of the you know uh, of where we're at, North America. So uh, I I don't know, Mark. I don't know how you do it up there, but that's why you barbecue so much, right? So you don't have to think about the cold weather. Yeah, I moved my new grill in today, and it was a little chilly. Well, we're going to be seventy two tomorrow. Nice. Well, good grilling weather. Of course, you can. We'll post the show with world-class show notes, and Mark's got a lot of links, so you're going to want to make sure you head out to the show notes at theaverageguy.tv. Yeah, easy way to find the show notes, by the way, home, I'm sorry, theaverageguy.tv slash, and then HGG for Home Gadget Geeks, and this one is 350, so it's super easy to find the show notes that way. All the shows are done. You can get it that way as well. Don't forget, you can listen to us live on the mobile app. Head out to homegadgetgeeks.com. That's the easiest way to find it. Android and iPhone, boom, boom, you're in. Put on the phone, absolutely free. Best way to listen to it on the road. We thank LastPass for their sponsorship of that. And don't forget, rate and review on iTunes, subscribe. Click on the bell on YouTube, both the live channel or the kind of the recorded channel. That's the best way to get to us there. Or like us on Spreaker. All those things are helpful. Mike, you're a fellow podcaster. I have not ever said that sentence like in any of my shows. I've done 300 and... 40 of these. I, I never ask for reviews. I never ask people to subscribe. Not never. Rarely ask people to subscribe on YouTube and Spreaker. Ever since I added that in, I'm actually getting people to subscribe. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Did, did you get for your podcast? Do you do that very much? You know, I don't do that often. And I, I can't remember the last time that I asked people to rate and review on iTunes. I just have not yeah. said that yeah. lately. I do typically mention, you know, for people to subscribe on uh, YouTube. And actually I do at the end of the show, I show our, we have a link page. I think you have a similar thing. And sometimes I show that, but I, I don't say anything about iTunes anymore other than we're there. I say it just because I think it's one of those things at work at no, Gallup. Good. We, our live channel had, I don't know, I'd say 30 subscribers. And I started saying that like three weeks ago and we're at 350 subscribers all of a sudden. So whatever, if you're listening to this show and you haven't done that yet, it's, voluntary but you do get uh youtube finally has a really good alerting system and so if you want to know when we're going live or when we've produced a video wherever you're listening to this head over there and just subscribe to it And there's a little bell if you push that it will tell you to get a little alert little toast notification when we go live or when we post so you can do that as well uh mike weger is out tonight he is not feeling well and uh, typically in the post show we talk crypto we're gonna suspend that uh this evening no crypto conversation uh, but we appreciate you guys. If you head out to the Patreon account, if you want to listen last week's all of crypto, the entire stuff was all, you didn't have, even have to be a Patreon supporter. But if you want to listen to the post show from last week, head out to theaverageguy.tv slash support. It was available to everyone. You don't need to be a Patreon subscriber. Typically, we have a $1 plan that you can subscribe to, and it gets you all that stuff automatically and an uh, easy way to listen to the show. But no crypto conversation tonight. We do have, you've heard from already, Mike Howard and Mark Robson are with us back for, I think, the third, third or fourth, maybe, something. Grill show that we've put together. Uh, Pretty excited about it and lots of great stuff to talk. Uh, Let me, guys, let me start it off with my own story because I have, when you think of grilling, you always think, you know, you got to have a grill, big fancy grill outside. Well, I, uh, over the winter, something crawled up into my grill and started chewing on the metal pieces that come off the burner, right? So you got those kind of expandable, flexible, right? They come down to the where you turn the burners on. At least that's the way my grill is. And something, I didn't know it, but something had got in there and chewed one of the things. So I light the grill and turn, you know, turn the gas on, light the grill, go in the house for a minute, come back. And I don't know why, but I, for some reason, I looked under my grill and a huge flame was shooting out of that, out of that pipe. Oh, yikes. You know, so you turn it off. Well, we had bought some really good sirloin steak for to, to grill that night. And I was thinking, oh, man, I what do I do? Duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
That would have been a oh, that would have been a good idea. I'm not actually saying to do that. I don't know what that would do. <laughs> Mark, probably not a good idea. Probably not <laughs> duct taping. But so I thought, you know, I've watched Gordon Ramsay cook steak in a cast iron, um, you know, skillet. And I thought here in Nebraska, there's some winters when we can't get outside and grill. And I thought, you know, I need to learn to do more cast iron work indoors. So we got out the cast iron. Uh, I always keep a little bit of bacon grease just kind of available on the stove. So we can, we can lube it up a little bit. We got it hot. I didn't get it hot enough, but I put a Gordon Ramsay video. He's got a really simple video on just how to really simply cook a good steak. Is that the and one with butter? What's the one with butter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> butter. We add a little garlic, so, you know, a little garlic to the butter. We always keep a real soft butter on this counter. You know, that's one of those things. We just kind of keep it out. So you have it. So we put it in there, sear it. And he only turns it once, right? So put it in, sear it, let it go, flip it, sear it, throw that butter in with it, marinate that, can continue to marinate it with the butter. The ladle is on top. He, yeah, oh, yes, he just gets a ladle and he just keeps. He's a fast. He is a fast griller on the on the stovetop. So and then he he bought it with the fat. You know, his his steak had a little fat along the one of the sides. I had bought these that had been removed or it wasn't the cut or whatever. But he likes to take it at the end and then hold it on the fat and just let that let it grill just at the end on the fat piece and then pull it off. So uh, uh, at some point I heard you're not really grilling indoors unless you set the fire alarm off. And of course I did. So that I had to turn that off. But you, you want a good hot. But I was surprised for me that like I now I think I'm a little more I want to find more of those kinds of recipes where I'm cooking in cast iron hot and indoors mm -hmm. and so I'm going to kind of continue to look for some of those where you that could be a grill recipe as well but here in Nebraska uh, Mike's a little different there in Atlanta but here in Nebraska and Mike maybe for you to, or Mark for you too when you can't get outdoors maybe you do it in and uh, so it turned out good it was delicious. It was some of the best steak. I, now I used like a whole stick of butter yeah. in the like, like in the process. But you, you can't do that on the grill. Like you can't, you know, you could not physically do that on a grill yeah. unless you had the cast iron. Um, so uh, for me, kind of a new, kind of a new th way of thinking. Like, hey, maybe I can do more cast iron, really hot cooking where it's like on the grill, or more stovetop. You know, um, I've got I've got a small cast iron that we did it in. I've got a bigger 12 inch that we could do some great stuff in. So I'm I think I'm going to teach myself some more. Mark, I've been watching you on Facebook. You have been going to these barbecue courses like crazy lately. Is yeah. it worth it? I mean, is it is that something that do people need to think about this? How expensive it is? Tell t tell me a little bit about that. So, is it worth it? Depends on your skill level. Yeah. Um. I'm learning one or two things per class. I'm sitting with people who are learning everything's new. I'm sitting with people who have gas barbecues and they've never used a smoker before. Um, I'm going through it going like, yeah, I'm doing those. I'm doing those. I'm doing those. Oh, I haven't done that before. Okay. That's cool. So I took the first one I took was a Mexican course and uh, we did uh, pico de gallo, which I made before. Uh, he showed us how to make homemade tortillas, which I hadn't done before, but I actually made them now twice, made them last weekend again. Um, we did carne asada. So then I went and bought a bunch of flank steaks so I can make some nice carne asada. We did fish tacos. I made fish tacos at home and with shrimp myself, um, that weekend. That was just the first course. <laughs> so wait, your first, uh, first class. Like that your first, yes. Is that your first course of food? <laughs> no, no. First class. <laughs> okay. And then the second one was, uh, when I just had last weekend, I think it was two weeks ago. And that was uh, chicken and ribs. So that we did good. ribs two different ways. Uh, we did the, so typically a rack of ribs I do at home is going to take four to six, maybe seven hours. Um, this rack was done in less than an hour for two racks. Wow. So he did what's called hot and fast. And I still like my way better, but it was just, it was a new way of showing it. So it's, yeah. it's all about learning. So it's all, doesn't matter how you're doing, it's all good. Um, now you say your smokers, um, are they teaching you on a stick burner or are they, are they have any of the, the pellet smokers? They have a Traeger Timberline, which is the top of line new Traeger. So there's eight grills at this restaurant, at this store. Uh, they have uh, three gassers that are 
high end gassers. One of them is called a Crown Verity. It's about twenty thousand dollars for a four burner gas. Yikes! Yeah, like big monster. Actually, not even that big. Just really high quality grills. Yeah. So I think they have two of two of those there. They have uh, a big green egg, which everybody knows. They have one called a Caliber, which is similar to big green egg, but a better quality. Um, they have a Primo XL, which I'd love to get, which is an oval ceramic Komodo. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my my sort of dream grills, if I'm going to get a dream grill. And then they got the Timberline, and then they had one other one. So last weekend I was cooking on the, uh, or two weeks ago, I was cooking on the, uh, the Primo XL. I ended up um, chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks with a jerk dressing on it, a jerk powder uh, rub. But it's, it's cool because you're actually prepping all the stuff. So the second course, like I said, we walked in. They had two uh, two whole chickens that we actually uh, spatchcocked, which is where you chop the backbone out. And then we deboned the whole thing, deboned the breasts, and then cut the breasts away from the legs and the thighs. And then did one set one way and one set another way. So the, the breasts were used for the chicken and waffles with a barbecue and syrup sauce, which is interesting, a little bit of heat to it. And then the uh, the jerk dressing on the other ones, and there was way too much food for the four of us, so they uh, end up chopping them up and bring them around to the store as, as samples. And then tomorrow night is a brisket class, so oh, Friday nice. night is five uh, six to nine is is prepping it, trimming it, and then putting it on the smoker. The cooks actually stay overnight, so not us, but the people who run the course stay overnight, and the babysit them all night. So I don't know what we're going to be cooking them on. I'm guessing it's probably going to be an offset uh, to be able to get. Uh, I think there's. I think there's five or seven briskets being done tomorrow night. So oh. it'll be like 10 to 14 people. And then we go back on the Saturday night at five o'clock and then we pull them off, trim them up and, and um, uh, get take. So I'm going with a friend of mine. We each take half the brisket home. So we're walking home with six pounds of brisket each. That's nice. Briskets is something that is a, a learned skill. Cause I was mentioning earlier in the pre-show that I've done four. One of them turned out awesome. One of them turned out, average and the other two were edible but they just weren't that good uh, i had pictures of my brisket but i don't know i try to find them i don't brisket's not easy i mean it's, it's not no it's it's some work uh, mark how much are these classes that you're taking? uh they're ranging from 100 to 125 dollars a person okay so not too bad and no. food included so it's an and expensive booze. dinner yeah oh and booze wow. and booze they're serving beer and wine nice wow. so it's licensed you're getting the food to have there the brisket one you actually bring home brisket with you Mm -hmm. um, and then he's got, he's got some neat ones coming up. So he's got a Mother's Day brunch where the family goes in and preps it for the for the mother. So it's like three hours of prep and then two hours of the mother. Um, I'm doing a guy's night out one, which is going to be bourbon and craft beer tasting to start off with. Oh, and then three appetizers and then a tomahawk steak, which if you've ever seen it, it's a rib steak with the bone on it. So it looks like Fred Flintstone's uh, steak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. You, you don't cook it like a – you cook it, you, and he's probably going to reverse sear it, so it's going to be slow smoked for a while and then put on a high heat just to finish it off, and you slice it as strips, and you serve the strips. So in, in Europe, they call it um, Cote de Boeuf, and I had it in, at my cousin's place last summer, and it, it's uh, – when it's done right, it's done really, really nicely. Um, but it's – again, it's, uh, it's $45 Canadian for one steak. So it's not something you want to mess around with. Like it's a big chunk of cash or a decent chunk of cash for one meal to mess it up. Just like brisket up here, we're paying $75 a brisket. 75. A Can what, well, I don't know what the exchange rate is right now. What's about 60 bucks. Okay. Wow. $55, that's $60. $60. For, uh, for a full packer? Yeah. For 12 to 15 pounds. Yeah. I think ours is probably about half that. Yeah. And even when I went down to the States, uh, so I was part of a pellet, a bulk pellet by about a month ago when we bought 2,000 pounds of pellet between three of us. And when we were down there, I, I stopped off at a couple of grocery stores on my back and one, only one grocery store had Packers and they wanted $8 US a pound. Wow. I'm like, I, I'm paying less than that at home. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, so the cost on uh, brisket, is even, whether it's yours or even here, brisket's not cheap. It's a lot of meat. Um, but it's also that time commitment because you're you're going to have it on the smoker for a good long time, and you know to at the end pull it off and be less than happy with it like I've been, is um, is well, one, not very much fun. It doesn't make me want to do another one until I go to a class myself. Yeah. One one thing I can tell you as a as a trick is see if you can find yourself a flat, so yeah. just a flat, not the point. 
or not the Proctor. And if you can find just a flat, I can get you a recipe that's a foolproof recipe. Okay. But it only works for a flat. I have tried it. You know, you, if you look on online, there's people who swear one or two ways that don't wrap it. And other people who say you've got to do the wrap. That's why it's so dry. Um, I, I basted mine. I, I braised it. Did so you I wrap smoked, it or? Yeah. So I, 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 you cook it on the grill for about, well, until it hits 160 degrees. Then you put it in an aluminum pan with uh, beef broth and cover it up. Mm-hmm. And you leave it there till it's 200 degrees. Mm-hmm. And it comes out. I'm just trying to see if I can find a picture on my phone. It comes out amazing. Like it, it just, it's. And uh, what um, what temperature are you cooking at? Smoking temperatures, two twenty five, two fifty. Okay. For the entire time. Oh, um, I looked up barbecue class Omaha, and we we have this place called Hub, helping you barbecue is what that stands for. <laughs> and uh, the, on April twenty eighth, they're offering a barbecue chicken and tri tip class, eighty five dollars. Eighty-five, but which is probably in line a little yeah. bit what, what you're talking about, uh, Mark. Nine to noon, your class will include meat selection, meat prep, trimming, fire management, flavor development, and presentation. Class will conclude with the barbecue samples and an open Q and A session. So interesting. Oh man, I, you got me, Mark. Do they um any do, are they deploying any tech? Like, are they showing you? Is there different tech tools because I know they're bringing you in because they you know they're hoping you see the grills and a lot of those other things right but but are they deploying any tech on this on some of these things that you've done the the only one that has any technology to it is the one we haven't used yet which is the Traeger Timberline um the guy that I'm taking the courses with tend to think of that as cheating because you just turn the dial and you walk away (laughs) that may be and I talked to him last weekend and I said you know what I said it's it's not any more cheating using that than it is using a big gas grill. I said, I don't have the time. There's, there's a type of cooker that most people think of as American style of barbecue, where you have a big barrel and a small barrel, mm-hmm. and that's called an offset grill or a reverse offset. Those take a lot of patience, and you're feeding the thing every half hour or an hour. And I think Mike has one. And no, you, can get some, you can get some really high end ones that you're paying a lot of money for that you're still babysitting every half hour, 45 minutes. And mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not going to do that overnight. I'm not going to kill myself no. to try and get a good piece of meat. And, and um, Jim, you mentioned fire management is one of the things. So, you know, like Mark was talking about, I did have uh, um, an offset where you have a little firebox and that you maintain the fire in there with wood or coal or whatever you're doing or a combination. And then the heat, you know, comes into the main box and that's what cooks it. And the fire management is just... Um, is it's so it takes so much effort and getting a consistent temperature. I was never really good at it. And if you're doing something like a brisket, you're going to have to be there pretty much overnight. And I kept running into where my fire would get ash bound. I'd have too much ash in there. And then I was fighting that and it, I would lose all the time. So I felt like a, um, a pellet grill, which is using little wood pellets that are fed by a machine, um, would be cheating. And I kind of resisted for a while. And then I gave up and I bought one and now I, I smoke a lot more because it's so much easier. You know, it's not like sticking the brisket in the microwave and coming out and saying, look, I'm done. Right. Um, but it is, it is much easier. And I know that some of the, the people who've been doing this for a long time are sometimes against this stuff. I know that rec- yeah. The rec tech at first did not want to do any kind of um, Wi-Fi or anything to, like that on their, on their cookers. But I think they're going to be adding that soon. Oh, it is and, now. Yeah, and for me, the one thing, the one piece of tech I'd like to have that I don't have now is I want my temperature um, probes that I want them to be Wi-Fi. I don't want Bluetooth. I don't want the radio frequencies or whatever it is. Because here in my office, the machine, the ones I have, I got to leave them over by the door. And, I, and because that's right at the edge and they'll go in and out every once in a while, right at the edge. I want a Wi-Fi one that I can come down here and, and see exactly what it is anywhere in my house. Oh, Mike, if yes. you go for the new Wi-Fi pellet controller from Rectech, yeah. it's Wi-Fi control and dual Wi-Fi meat temp probes. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be there getting. You go. That's that's the one. I, Aaron's coming on. Aaron Lawrence is coming back. She's been doing grill tech all winter on her program, and we're going to have her on in a couple of weeks. 
I've seen yes. some of her uh, meter, yeah. meter, meter, meter thermometers. They're getting really good. Like yeah. it's getting impressive. I have the old eye devices one that the wire that you plug in. It works great. Little battery works great. You know, connects to the phone. Like you said, I come downstairs here and it disconnects from my phone because it's right. too far away. Um, but that's been a great little thermometer and I've used that indoors and outdoors on the turkey. I've done it on the meat. You guys finally talked, you know, I got an instant read thermometer. This is something like it took me two shows to that. finally get an instant read thermometer. And I bought one that's magnetic so I can just stick it to the side of the microwave. It's always in the same spot. Go out there. And I use the instant read in uh, when I was cooking those steaks inside. I wanted to make sure we were at the right temperature. Uh, for them and gosh, so handy. I was like, how did I ever do this? I right. use it for everything, for burgers, even for burgers, because I now I can get them exactly at the temperature I want. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. not a little bit over, a little bit under. They're always right there. No, it's I don't know how I ever did, how I ever did without it. That's that's got to be a, kind of a must to have. Mm -hmm. um, Mark, you've uh, <laughs> I, how many grills have you gone through in the last year or so? It seems like you're always buying, <laughs> selling, and trading constantly. What? <laughs> What, and you got a new one as well. And what did Mark get? Yeah, what, what, rec deck. Yeah, <laughs> talk about uh, talk about that that new rec deck. What'd you get? Um, okay, well, just before I do this, this was yeah. my last, my first attempt at brisket. Oh, that's good. That looks good. So that was a flat. That was the that was what was left of it. The picture didn't last very long because it got eaten very very quickly. And the potatoes, I assume, how'd you do those? Uh, we do a lot of uh, roast potatoes in the oven on a pampered chef stone. So for actually those might've been done in our uh, T-File Octafry, but basically they're just soaked for half an hour, 40 minutes, tossed in the oven for 40 minutes or in the Octafry for about 25. I, we've, been taking, we've been making just a little envelope of tin foil as well. And then throwing those right on the grill, just kind of rolling it and salting those down and some stuff, man, they come out well. Sweet potatoes are a great grilling potato too. Super good, super easy. But higher um, heat. Yeah, yes, yep, yep, and longer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. But the back of my grill is real hot. So that's yeah. a good, that's a, we roll them up and I just lay them on the back of the grill and they get, they get plenty of, uh, they get plenty of heat there. Okay. Talk about your new rec tech. So, um, like any hobby I have, if, I, if I'm, if I know I'm interested in the hobby, I'll keep, I'll put out RSS feed searches on our version of uh, Craigslist, which is called Kijiji. And funny enough, it's owned by eBay. Um, but it's, it's just the Canadian version of, of a Craigslist. We have Craigslist, but nobody uses it or not as many people use it. So I always have a search for pellet grills on top of that, or pellets, I'm just trying to find deals on pellets. On top of that, I'm on a couple of Facebook groups and there's a Canadian pellet grillers forum or group on Facebook because we have different issues that people in the States do. We're paying $1.10 a pound for pellets where people in the States will pay $5 for 40 pounds. Yeah, yeah, um, I get mine at Menards. Like they're cheap. I get a big bag. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the prices we pay brisket. You guys can get it for buck fifty a pound. We're lucky to get it for five or six dollars a pound. Wow. So, but you have free health care that makes up for it. <laughs> yeah, we need it after all the meat. <laughs> <laughs> so, on one of these, so you start making friends on these groups. People you never met before, but you become. You, you see the guy saying names coming up again, and you start having conversations. And uh, one of the conversations we'd had was on whether or not you can use heating pellets in your pellet grill. And the general consensus from people who've done a lot of research on it, me included, is that as long as it's using a 100% hardwood uh, source, as long as you're using food safe grease, there's no such thing as a certified food grade pellet. They're made, Traeger's pellets at one point were made in other mills. They're still made sometimes in other mills. So one of the guys I'm friends with lives about uh, 10 hours north of me, a place called Timmins. And he was on a group and he, he's on a competition group and he posted a guy in Ottawa, which is where I live, selling two Rectex. And he was selling two Rectex for a thousand bucks or five or six hundred dollars a piece. And I see this thing on Facebook and I write to the guy, I'm like, where are you? He goes, and he actually lives five minutes away from me. Wow. He literally lives five minutes away. I'm like, I want to see it tonight. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I want to see it tonight. My wife's getting home late from work and she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm going out to see a barbecue. And her response was whatever. <laughs> so I, I go see the thing. The guy from um, the pellet grill forum had already told me, he said, this guy competes with it. They take really good care of their stuff. I go down and see it. It turns out that this guy has started work at a place I just quit from nine months ago. If I'd mm -hmm. stayed at my old job, I would have been working with him. Wow. So it's That's a really exactly. small world. 
Yeah. And then he knows a friend of mine who does com uh, competitions and I bought some pellets off of him last summer and he had this guy about the grill from ended up loading the pellets into my buddy's trailer and I unloaded them. So it was a whole bunch of different things around us. But um, long story short, I'm like, okay, here's a hundred bucks. Hold it until next week. And uh, I got home and then I started looking for a buyer for my other grill. And a guy that I talked to two weeks before said, uh, so a buddy of mine wants your grill. He'll text you on the weekend. So it turned out that I sold, I had a little thing called a uh, Traeger tailgater, which was, uh, I think it's a 15 by so about a 250 or 300 square inch grill. Uh, his legs fold up on it. Um, I only used it, I want to say six months, maybe. And I used it twice last year because I replaced it with another grill that I got another good deal on because I was looking for deals all the time. And I sold that grill for basically what I paid for it. Plus I threw a, a bag of pellets in and a front shelf. Um, so it cost me $150 for the new grill. I'm happy. He's now going to buy a bigger grill. He's looking for a thing called a Louisiana grill whole hog or super hog, which is actually two pellet grills end to end. And you lift up the two doors and you can put an entire pig on one grill at once. Wow. So I've, I've seen uh, the Louisiana grills, yeah. So yeah, have you so cooked with the Rectech yet? No, I just moved into the backyard tonight. Okay. It's heavy. It's, it's really heavy. It's 150 pounds. Yes. But the, the diffuser plate and the drip pan and the grates are probably about 25 pounds or 30 yes. pounds. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing, so I'm taking my barbecue course tomorrow and Saturday. So on Sunday night, I'm probably going to do a batch of ribs as a, as a test cook on it. But it's, it's beautiful. You lift up the lid on this thing. And this, somebody who doesn't like smoking, they're not going to appreciate it. But the inside of the lid looks like leather from all the smoke he's run through this thing. <laughs> and he's won numerous brisket competitions and chicken and rib competitions. And, um, but that being said, I, I've got it in my house today and I'm already looking at doing the upgrades. So, you, you now you have the red one. You have the red, I have the red, red one. The lid, right? Yeah. I have I have that same one, the 680 with yep. the red lid. Um uh, they've come out with a new lid and uh porcelain lid. Yep. And mine has a few spots. I do have a cover on it. It is outside. I have a few um cover on it. A few spots where some of the paint's starting to peel. And I think that when the red cover comes back, right now all they have is the black. Uh the red lid, I should say. I'm gonna go with that red porcelain lid um uh, and do that. I'm you gonna also, hold. Go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, you had mentioned that they uh, they I know they changed the fire pot to a porcelain fire pot, ceramic. Ceramic, yes. I'm sorry, ceramic. So I'm gonna do that upgrade on mine too, and then the Wi-Fi thing. I've not seen that on their web page yet. Where it's, it's not out yet. You have to follow the groups on it, but the scoop on it is so the new Wi-Fi. They call it the Y pellet okay. controller, which is on the new Rectech grills. Um, they're making that that. Uh, controller fit the old one and when they first release it it's $100 US yeah. and then after a certain amount of time it goes to $200 US okay. and they're only going to release it to people who have the first generation one so they're not going to release it to the general population it's going to be a invite only email okay good so I'm going to I was going to wait and buy that I was going to keep it as it was for a year and then go and buy it but um, because this one is over four years old it doesn't have the super smoke button on it it has a okay. feed button instead of super smoke uh, so with the new controller, I got the Wi-Fi, the dual meat probes, and the super smoke. So it was uh, like, yeah, for and I save a save hundred dollars US. So yeah. I'll do that, and I'll get the ceramic igniter at the same time. Have they said anything about the uh, timeline and when they think that'll be available? It's on a slow boat from China, and they said when it passes through the Panama Canal, they're going to send out the emails. Okay, and and I I don't know if you said this or not, or I just missed it. Um, is this got the Wi-Fi and all that in, built into it? Yeah, so the new new controller's got Wi-Fi and dual meat probes. Okay, yep, yep. Because that's so what I get... want. I want the Wi-Fi and all that. Yeah. I do have the, the – oh, mine is called Extreme Smoke. Yes. Uh, I do have that setting on mine. Um, now, you yeah. mentioned uh, a wireless Wi-Fi meat thermometer. Yes. So I have the smoke thermometer. And I'm not sure – I think I put it in the, in the show notes. Um, so the smoke thermometer with the Wi-Fi bridge. So – you get a little uh, dongle that you keep with you all the time. But then if I leave, I can actually go get the, the gateway, use a gateway to get onto the, um, onto Wi-Fi on my phone. Okay. And that does tracking just like the iGrill does for both channels. And that is, I've have, I've 
two Mavericks. I have a Bluebird, I think it's called, which is a, an eBay one. Um, this smoke blows them all away. Is, is this what we're looking at? I got that up on the screen, Mark. That, that right, right there is the best wireless thermometer you're going to get that I've seen. And then there's a gateway that goes with it, a Wi-Fi gateway. That's usually on the same page. You scroll down a little bit and it usually has it. What's the, so 100 bucks is the retail? It's 100 bucks retail for that. And right there is a bridge on the left-hand corner there. The I think you mentioned this last time, but the bridge wasn't out yet. Yeah, it just came out, well, it came out last spring, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. And it does tracking. It gives you the graphs. You can export the stuff. It, it, it's now there's some higher ones like there's one called a Fireboard, which I think is two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars, and it gives you four channels. But if I have that and I have my Wi-Fi uh, controller, I'll have three channels of meat, and and be able to control my grill at the same time. Yeah, that'll give me everything I want. Nice, nice man. But so you're you're talking though two hundred right for that whole. For yeah, the whole setup that way. Yep, you can get cheaper ones, but the nice thing about that, so the, on the Mavericks, which is the other really popular one, I think Mike's got one or two of them. I have a yeah, couple yeah. of them. Yeah. Every time you fire the thing up, you have to, um, you have to get in the sink, and you have to fire one up before the other one, and then sometimes it doesn't sink properly, and it's got a good range. You got a couple hundred feet from it. The smoke is paired together. So you fire one up, you fire the other one up, it goes bang, you're there. You can turn one off, turn one on, doesn't matter. You can calibrate the probes. So you can actually put them in a pot of boiling water or ice and actually make sure the probes are, are where they're supposed to be. Um, service on them is phenomenal. Like they, they're, that's is all that company does is, is um, kitchen gadgets. So they do uh, timers and thermometers. Yeah, so you know, the Mavic, I think it's supposed to have like a 300 foot range, but that's if you're outside with no obstruction. So for me, I'm not actually that far from the grill, but I'm going, I'm in the basement. So I was having to go down through several floors and or not several, two floors. And, um, you know, that means that it, it, I lose range once I come into the room. Yeah. I was, I was getting about 70 feet in the house and I was getting about maybe, maybe 150, 200 feet outside. I can go to, I can make it to a neighbor's house, three houses down. I go in his backyard and put it on his fence and I can just reach it. So this now gets rid of all that. And, yeah. and it's just, you pick up the stuff and it just, it's a quality feel to the product. Um, the, the smoke itself and the, the dongle of the, the part that hangs around your neck. And then the, the gateway, the app is actually pretty, it works pretty well as well. Okay. okay. On my traditional grill, my 20 year old, 22 years old now, I have, it, it, it doesn't, I have trouble getting the temperature low enough for smoke, right? It's, it's but that's that's a gas grill. That's the, that's the issue of a gas grill. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't get it. I, I can, but it's really hard to get it at those really low temperatures. If that's what I'm going to do. So I had a four burner, and the only way I was able to do it, two burners on was too high. So I had to go to one burner, but then it was too low. So what I had to do was I took one burner and I filled in the gap behind the very back of it with tin foil. Mm -hmm. So to try and keep the heat that was generated from the one, and then put all the ribs on the one side and. But for all the hassle you're going for for that, look on Craigslist and buy yourself a fifty dollar Weber, yeah. and just be. Yeah, can, 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 I was going to ask you. Well, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. You can smoke easily on a Weber. Like there, there's. I have a twenty two inch kettle. I have, I have one called Performer, so it's got a little cart with it. But I had a bunch of the features I liked. But I've I've done days where I've smoked on my trigger and smoked the same ribs on the Weber at the same time. So I had two rocks on the trigger and two rocks on the Weber, and it just. If you know how to play with the thing, it, it works. And uh, charcoal, or were you doing yeah. wood? Charcoal. Wood, uh, wood charcoal. Uh, charcoal with wood chunks on top for smoke. If I wanted to go, you know, because I really want to do a Weber this year. This is, I think, this is one of the things I'm going to do this spring. Can I really just kind of find a used Weber and and I mean, in in uh, the yes, yeah, so okay, well, so I can just really find something. It doesn't need to be fancy. I just need right something. Yeah. So th there's. On the Webers, there's a couple of different classes of Webers, and you, and you look at the accessories and tells you which one you're going to get. So the very bare bone one is literally two pieces of two bowls stamped together, and they have holes in the bottom, and the ash falls at the bottom onto a saucer. I like have my ash caught. I don't like the idea of it just landing onto the saucer because then if you get uh, embers flying out and it lands on a wooden deck, and then yeah, well, I've stepped on a hot ember coming out of a Weber so, before, burnt my foot, yeah. 
some of the ones I can't, I can never remember the name of them, but some of them have a catch can at the bottom of it. Um, another thing that you look at on some of the higher ones is that you have a lot of them, if you want to hang the lid, you pull the lid off of it and you're like, oh, what do I do with the lid? Well, there's a little lip on the inside of the cover. The other way is the nicer ones that they actually have a ring around the outside of the, of the kettle and you can take the lid and you put it on the side of the kettle and it sits in this nice little basket on the side of the kettle. So the two things I wanted were, actually the third one's a grate. So there were, I wanted to have a grate that could remove the, the middle out of it. And it also has a flip up edges. So when I'm doing low and slow on it, I put all my charcoal at one side and I put um, uh, interlock pavers and then I put the wood on top of that. And that's how I do my smoke and I set everything else as offset. Um, if I'm gonna do something like uh, uh, searing steaks on it, I can lift up the center section and I can do what I use a thing called a, uh, it's called a Portex, but it, the official name is called a Vortex and that's in the show notes. The Portex is people are realizing what the guy was making and charging, I think it was 35 or $40 US for a piece of uh, stainless steel wrapped into a band. So people started realizing, well, I can go buy a salad bowl or a dog water bowl and chop the bottom off it. And then I have a poor version of the same thing. So the poor tech started to really become popular. Um, so and that's, and that's what I'm showing right now, right? Yeah. So that's a poor text because you can see it actually has a, it's a dog, it's a, a salad bowl that somebody tri trimmed the bottom off with a grinder. And the, in the ring. So it's just open in the center. Kind yeah. Of so that ring pops out. So the ring is a stock, a stock rubber grate. And it's just an, ups, an inverted stainless steel water bowl inside it. And I've had my Weber up to 700 degrees with that method. Wow. Um, and then you notice that there's nothing underneath the chicken wings. So the, the premise is that the heat rises from the middle and then gets circulated back down underneath it and then gets superheated. So you end up with really crispy. And on top of that, the, the metal is radiating like uh, convection. Hmm. So I made myself one of those good. this year. I'm in, a, I'm in a rib I, contest or a wing contest this summer. So I got to, you got to get your wings on. Got to get my wings. It's just within the neighborhood, but it, yeah. 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 No, it's, um, it's great that you have a neighborhood that has a contest. Mike, do you, um, do you have a Weber, Mike? I do not know. I have the Rectex uh, 680. I have um, a gas grill and then I have the griddle, the Blackstone 36 inch griddle. Okay. So I'm, just asking, three. I'm just three. You're just a three guy. I'm just a one yeah. guy. Uh, although I think I'm going to get a Weber this year. This is the, I want to get into some more charcoal, um, charcoal grilling. Um, Ken is asking, does it work on an acorn? Could you do that so, on an acorn? Yeah, there is, there are guys doing it. I'm just trying to pull the, the pictures of them. Um, guys are doing it on acorns and what they're doing is they're using uh, charcoal chimneys. So the standard uh, Weber style charcoal chimney Um without the plastic handles on it. So they're cutting the handles off or buying cheaper ones. And they put it in the bottom and in, in the uh, acorn, there's a, a grate right at the very bottom of it. And it's got a center section that can be removed, the same thing again. Um, and it actually works a little better because you, you lose less heat to the, because it's insulated, you lose less heat onto the outside of it. Yeah, so I never thought about putting a chimney in the center and letting that heat come out and then radiate around. Yeah, and so, so it's like indirect, but from yeah. the top. Yep. It goes up through the middle and then does a recirculation thing. Just take so the plastic off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you use the the the, uh, the water bowls. So there's no plastic on them. Yeah. But the, the nice thing about the Weber, the nice thing about the Acorn is that, first off, especially for the Webers, you can find them cheap. Um, I'm seeing guys all the time on Craigslist for 25 bucks with a cart or 50 bucks with a cart, and people are saying like, "It's an hour away from me. Is it worth the drive?" And we're like, "Yeah." Go for it. Like there's nothing, there's there's no mechanical parts, there's no moving parts. Right. So you need to go buy a new grill. Well, the grill is gonna cost you twenty dollars US. Like it's and you can play with them. There's something you can hack around with. Um the other thing, if you get one, the trick is get a chimney. The I had a friend over, I think two summers ago, and it, we were up and barbecuing in 20 minutes, and he's like what do you mean you're done? I'm like, it's ready to go. It's, we used to light the chimney. Yeah, it works where the, the stuff from the bottom lights to the top and it ends up getting super hot and 20 minutes and you're up, your, your coals are ready. How do you light your coals? Uh, I use everything from fire lighters to newspaper to, to uh, Weber cubes. That's whatever mm. I have in the house. Use anything like this? Oh, I have that too. <laughs> 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 I 
have a range of uh, torch, torch uh, oh, flamethrowers down up by the barbecue. You have to, if you're watching, if you're listening to the audio only, you have to go. We, we're at a minute 42. Uh, you need to. <laughs> I think we're a little further than minute 42. Well, no, we're, we're at 42. Well, we're all taking a pretty <laughs> bit yeah. So we, st- we started pretty close on time. But, uh, Mike, do you uh, do you like that from the bottom with that, Mike? Or I do. Oh, I use yeah. So I use this for uh, – I got to get one of those. When I, when I had a charcoal grill, I use this to light the chimney sometimes. What I use it for now, and this is just one of the things you get from Lowe's or Home Depot with a thing on the top of it that has a you know on-off switch, and then you could just – light it like that's really easy but uh i use it now for that amazing smoke tube you remember uh, we talked about that last time i think yeah no i need one for that those are great and and when you put pellets in there it takes a little bit to get those pellets smoldering and and going once they're going they're fine but um this thing you put it on there and and, you know you hit it for a while and it gets them going really good so i yeah i definitely use this really have no other use for it right now but i use it for my to get my smoke Mm -hmm. tube going I need I I need to go get one. Uh, that's the next because I've been using the heck out of that tube. Um, I also need to get just bigger cuts of meat. I've been you know I'm a steak or a burger or a dog or a brat, and those are all pretty easy. But I I do need for some of the for some of these and and I would like to go more charcoal for this summer, and and kick over to that and do just do some do some cuts. This is a whole, uh, Mark, this is a whole different way of thinking about it. You know, you could roast this with the with the chimney method or with the center heat, and you could use that roaster we talked about the last time if you got a couple of those, and you could get four chickens, right, on a... No, no? you don't want enough height. Okay, okay. So the, the top of the Weber would not would not allow for, for that. But what um, you could do is you could put a couple of chickens on a Weber without the... Um, without the roasting pan on indirect heat after you brine them and just let the thing smoke for a couple hours at like 300 degrees and then, yeah. and use your meat thermometer to tell you when it's done. And they're, they're tasty. So if you wanted to smoke out of this configuration where you've got your heat in the center. No, you, you wouldn't, have... you wouldn't, you don't smoke this way. This okay, is for high heat. Okay. Okay. The vortex is for high heat. Got it. Um, to smoke with a Weber, the way there's a whole bunch of, of accessories you can buy. Um, I use interlock pavers, uh, so I have it set up so I put two interlock pavers, the standard what are they, four, three by eight inches or something, on the far left hand side. Put hot coals, a chimney full of hot coals behind them, and then the whole rest of my area is, is indirect heat, and I put the vent over top of the indirect side. In in a standard Weber, the old school fifty dollars. That's right. how what, how big is that? Twenty two inches. Okay, and then if I they but they make a bigger one, right? They make the king the the ranch. Okay. Uh, sorry, I think they make a twenty six, which I don't see, you don't see a lot of, but then they make the ranch, which is a three footer. Okay, and that's the one that's got the the grates will fold up on the side, right? No, nope, that's put... what I have. Okay. Twenty two the twenty two inch the higher end twenty two inch ones will have that. Okay. So that's one of the other things you'll notice when you buy when you look at a Weber kettle is that this the the wire dimension on the grates is different. So I think. If you can find the one that has the flip up sides and the center piece in the middle, that's the highest quality one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to start looking. I think um, I, we have a lot of military in our area, and this is one of those kinds of things where they buy those and then, you know, they, they, they get rid of them because they got to move and they don't want, you can't take, you know, you're not taking a grill with you. That, um, that acorn that Ken's talking about, I've seen a bunch of guys getting those from Walmart for 68 bucks. Ooh. That's good. That's good. Brand oh, new. Shoot. Well, new, sixty-eight bucks new is the right price. Yeah. Now, anything like this is is every time I talk to somebody who's getting the charcoal, there's a learning curve. Right. Definitely. Right. And it's been a long time since I've done charcoal. I mean, I've this gas grill that I bought back in '94 has been my mainstay, and I know that thing. I know every square inch of it. I know where things cook hot and where they cook cold, and where I can, you know, I've got those rhythms down. In fact, I know right where to put the smoker so it keeps the heat like it'll get going and then there's just enough heat there to keep those pellets smoking nicely you know and it's amazing tube yeah 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 i'm putting the amazing tube right on the end of my right on the end of my grill and so it's pulling in air and then it's smoking it across and then pushing it out on the other side all right hold on mike do you find you get enough smoke from your amazing tube in your rectech 
so in the rec tech I do, and what those pictures that I have up here, this is in on my grill. You don't get as much in the grill because you're cooking for such a short time for the hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like don't, for, I don't smoke hamburgers. For a, a chicken like this, I I do. I you know, I got the long one and you know it will go for you know four hours or whatever. It does add some smoke to it. I was thinking about picking up the uh, the maze now that I have now that I have the 680 and I have a shelf that comes with it, so I got a th uh, a thousand square inches of surface area. Um, yeah, I could oversmoke my stuff. Now, Jim, you said you don't smoke burgers. I haven't been just because, like, to get the I don't have the light the right lighter to get those pellets going the way they're supposed to be going, and so I just it's so much trouble for that short a time. I have just kind of been not doing it, but. For anything bigger than that, uh, yeah, I've been trying Probably. to use. Yeah. So that is a reverse seared uh, strip loin steak. So that was smoked mm. for half an hour first and then seared. And would you smoke at what temperature? Uh, 225. Okay. But you could cold smoke it. Yeah. Because it's meat, you could actually put it in there with no um, no flame on and just cold oh. smoke it for a couple hours. Oh, and then grill it. Like, oh, that's, that's a good idea. It. Smoke taste, yeah. Yeah, so I could put it on at one or two. It would just the tube and let it smoke, right? And then for an hour or two is what you said. And then yeah. then turn it on, get it real hot, sear it, get it to the right temperature and take it off, right? Yeah, because pork and chicken, you can't do that with because you have to get it because of salmonella issues, right? You got to make yeah. sure you're getting up. I think it's have to be 140 in under four hours, I think is what the, the guidelines say. But meat, you can. Like red meat, you can. I've been doing um, what I call no flip burgers, where I put them on the smoker at yeah. four, 400 degrees, whatever it was. I don't remember the exact temperature, but you put them on the smoker and it will get a, I put it on the stream smoke maybe for the first little bit. And then the rest of it, you know, go in at whatever temperature there for, and it takes a, about an hour or so to cook them. So yeah, that's the nice thing about the pellet grill though. You don't necessarily, like if I put a chicken on it, I don't yeah. rotate it. I put it on and just leave it. Right. So, I just took a, a, prompt, um, a meat thermometer in there, whatever, pre meat probe, and come back out when it's, you know, 145, 150, whatever. Oh. And so, okay. So how do you get that started again? Tell me, tell me how you get started. What do you On that, With your no-foot burgers, how do you oh. start it? What, at what temperature? And I think because I'm trying to get some of the extreme smoke and I do it like at 180 um, okay. for 20 minutes or so, and then I crank it up okay. from there. And I might use a smoke tube in there too to keep to keep the smoke going even when I'm at the higher temperatures. And that way, you know, I do have to do some. I have to think about it beforehand because you know, with on the grill, I'm like 10 minutes or less per side. So 20 minutes later, I've got burgers. Where on the smoker, I'm gonna have to like get up the temp, and then I'm going to need to you know let it sit there for a little bit longer. Yeah. But as long as you plan it out, you know, it's actually easier because once I get it on there, I never come back to it until. Right. Um, you know, it, it says the burgers are done. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some slow cooked burgers because we just go traditional. I get the, you know, I get it up to 400. I get them on there. I cook them till there's, till I see some red coming out of the top. You flip them, same thing, pull them off. It's perfect every time like that, that, uh, that works so great, but, um, and it's fast. You're yeah. done in 20 minutes. Sometimes Sarah has the, the meat done though early and I could take it out there and smoke it for an hour. Mark, so just tell me if I'm wrong. I could put the burgers on the grill, light the smoker, close the lid, let it smoke for an hour or two, come back out, turn it on, bring the temperature up, or or set the temperature really, really low, like Mike's saying, put a probe in it, and just wait till it gets the right temperature, right? Well, that's that, the whole premise of reverse searing is that you want to get it within, like, say, 10 or 15 degrees of final temperature, and then you just put it on – like. It, on that steak, I actually put it on, pulled it off when it was ready because my Weber wasn't ready yet. So I, I smoked it in my, I'm lucky and crazy enough that I have multiple grills. And depending on who I'm talking to, I look like a novice or I look like a pro. Cause I know some guys who have, one of my friends on Facebook has 12 grills. Oh Good my God. God. So me sitting here with four, I, I'm, I'm not normal, but I'm less not normal than he is, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I, but because I have a smoker and I have a, I have stuff that's good for high temperatures, I use my my pellet grills for typically low and slow, uh, low and slow, and anything less than typically anything less than four hundred degrees. Mm -hmm. So I'll smoke a steak on those, and then I'll put them onto my Weber at six hundred degrees for thirty seconds or forty five seconds aside. 
just, and just that's to, what that storyline was. Just, just to just get to that, it. yeah, yeah, just yeah. get that sear, get that, get that, uh, that, 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 that burn. Yeah. And now, when I did, I did a prime rib at Easter. We had a nine, uh, eight and a half pound prime rib. Um, that one I seared first on the acorn, and it was 500 degrees when I seared it for half an hour, and then I put it on the smoker until it was done. So I did the inverse of that one. And I, the d big difference is if you pre-smoke them, the entire meat looks like it's the same uh, doneness. If you sear first, then you always got some outside that's the outside will be more done than the inside. But when you think about it, something like a prime rib, you want to be able to have a variety of meat. So you want like the kids can have the outside and the adults have the inside. Yeah, I need to think about that more. This is this is why we do this show because every time we do it, I learn a little bit more. Like, oh, okay. Like I, I never would have thought to take an hour or two to smoke the burgers first, then sear them and bring them in. That's that's God, that's genius. Okay, yeah, and I or, like to use mesquite um, pellets for the, for that for that for beef. Bit, yeah, it's a little bit stronger uh, pellet. I wouldn't use it. For everything, but uh, I like it on the on the burgers. I think mesquite I would only use on beef. Yeah, from everything I've ever read, I I think I've only used them once, and and it's got a very significantly stronger taste. Yeah, but even on it's not, what I have found on the pellets, it's not as strong as if you bought mesquite wood chunks. No. Yeah, so it it you're not going to get quite as strong of a flavor with the mesquite pellets, but um, I, yeah, you're right. I only use it on really. I think I've only used it on burgers. Mike, you have a couple tools that you've thrown into the show notes when I'm looking at because it said bacon on it. But uh, what, what what kind of things you've been cooking <laughs> so with? The one thing we haven't talked about yet is my griddle. I have a Blackstone 36 inch griddle. And, you know, it's, you know, if you go into, you know what a griddle is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, for me, one of the problems when I did bacon and bacon on there just smells all awesome. It just, I, all that bacon just seared on there is just awesome. But it curls up and I don't like that curled up thing. So um, that was one I, I bought. It's the, um, where's my thing at? The Lodge, Lodge LP3 yeah, the Lodge. rectangular here. I'll show yeah. that. I'll, I'll throw that up on the screen. It's fairly cheap. It's got great reviews on Amazon. I haven't used it yet, but I have it coming and um, it'll keep your bacon flat. Now, if you're doing a lot of bacon, you may need more than one of these um, on there, but yeah, it's something good. The other thing I had on there, if you buy the Blackstone like I did, it has a defect. I don't know if they say it's a defect. I say it's a defect. And that is not this one, Jim, but the um, the other one. Mod. Yeah, hold on. So what happens is, is that the, the, where the grease is coming down, supposed to drip into its pan, no. it actually overflows. It always overflows. And so I have a little bucket at the bottom, you know, that the, the, that leg is sitting in that bucket because I know it's going to drip down in there. Well, there's this mod you can get. Um, did I not put the right link there? I think you put the same link to the press for, <laughs> for right, both of them. <laughs> we'll get that. We'll get that part right. Oh, while you're showing that, uh, flip over my my. Yeah, you're spare. on. You're on, Mark. Um, you're talking about liking bacon. That was part of our Easter Easter dinner. And those so, are those are Brussels sprouts. Bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts, and then bacon wrapped uh, jalapeno stuff with turkey sausage and parmesan. Nice. And how long do those take? Hour, hour and fifteen ish. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, what at what heat? Uh, those are two seventy five, I think. Oh, that's not too bad. I buy bacon in bulk because indirect, direct much. doesn't matter. Uh, I do them on my Traeger, so it's indirect. Okay, okay, Mike, I have that link up now. And, and there's the little mod. It's only like fifteen bucks. It's from a place called Backyard life gear or something like that and um it let's see i don't have the live page up it will it will do what it's supposed to do what the thing is supposed to do and that is drip into the drip pan and you won't get it all over your deck or your patio or whatever else has happened my as a minor defect that they didn't do right if you don't get this you're going to have stuff spill all over the place the other thing i have happened with mine let's say you're doing bacon like we were just talking about and mine is near my house it's up against the house the bacon is, of course, splattering everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And I've got some marks on that wall that's uh, my the side of my house where the bacon is splattered there. So I think the other link I had that is that grill cover. Um, 
you can, I have an actual cover cover that goes on mine, but some people buy this thing. I'm looking at getting this thing too. Uh, if you go to the next link yep. and it is, no, give me one second. it is a metal cover that this guy has made. You could probably make your own, but it goes over top of it or protect the griddle, but then it has some little hooks on the back of it. So when you go to take it off, you hook it onto the back of the griddle and that will, you know, be your splash guard, so to say. So it won't get all up against your house. It, so it comes up. And then it's the the back of it becomes a splash guard. Correct. Yeah. 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 I don't know if they had a picture that actually showed that. Um, maybe the next one. Can you go to the next picture? Uh, that's all right. Let's see. Here. You get yeah. griddle a lot. Uh, from whenever it's not windy, um, I think it's the second picture. It doesn't show you it set that way, but it, you can see the hooks on the bottom of it. Um, when it's the thing with this is the burners are exposed, and I think it has four burners. The Blackstone thirty six inch grill. And if the wind will come from the side and it will it will make it a challenge to to grill, you know, grill on that thing if you're in an open environment like I am. And so I do it basically whenever it's a non-windy day and I have you know the time to do it. Fairly quick to get it up to heat and to you know season it afterwards. You just put some oil, you clean it off, see put some oil that on it, wipe it down, and then put the cover back on. And so it's you're pretty fast in and out. There's two things I've seen. Um one was a rec tech and grill grates commercial or YouTube video. And they were showing using the grill grates flipped upside down to act as a bit of a griddle. Yeah. And they were using that for um, ribeye steaks. Yeah. And the other thing is um, in my show notes, I had a, a link to a Himalayan um, salt plate. And we used that in my Mexican class to do uh, fish tacos on. And it gave <laughs> a nice little... Um, yeah hint the salt to the fish without any seasoning on it. Mark, I'm going to see if I can bring that up here. Uh, Other gym out there says hickory. Uh, I guess he's, that's probably going back to when I say I'm a skeet. Yeah. And, and you'll probably like Mark does. I have a whole, you know, realm of different things. Apple, um, hickory, pecan, mesquite. Uh, I don't know what else, but I use a little five gallon buckets from Home Depot or Lowe's with a nice cover on the top that you can twist on and off. And I just fill mine up um, with all the different things yeah. I've got and put those next to the grill. Mike, that was going to be my little hack too, was that I just use five gallon buckets with lids. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you then you can, because Mark, it's cheaper here in the United States. We, we don't have free healthcare, but we have really cheap <laughs> pellets. Yeah. And so, um, it, which is a trade-off. It's just a trade-off, right? Um, we're throwing that, uh, that Himalayan salt plate up, up there, Mark, that's, that's up for folks to see. Yeah. Yeah. And what is that? Okay. So to, 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 put that you... on the grill and you get it nice and hot and then you cook your, your food on top of it. Ooh. Like, so what would, what, what would be good on this? What would you. The two I've heard about and one I've actually tried was uh, cod. Mm, so fish, uh, something, maybe and... something you would do on a, on a cedar plank. Too, yeah. Right? So they did cod and they did scallops. And there's something to do with the salt and being, I think they said antibacterial, that you don't wash it, you just let it burn off. Okay. Um, that Willing Sonoma is going to be the gourmet version, but it's the same as, it, it, it's, you can find it anywhere. I just found that one as a link. Yeah. They're selling them at Costco right now for 25 bucks a piece mm -hmm. up here. Uh, the other thing that the, one of the Komodo, um, Komodo Joe guys told me about was soapstone. Um, and there's a place around here that sells them. Uh, but it's, I think a, uh, 12, a nine by 12 or nine by 14 sheet of soapstone for like $30 and it acts like a griddle and you can cook burgers on it and wings on Ooh. it and it makes it. Yeah. And, um, uh, I lost my competition last year in ribs to a buddy of mine. Well, there's only, there only three of us competing, but I lost to him doing them on his gas grill with soapstone huh. and it annoyed me because I cooked my ribs for seven hours. And one of the girls said, these taste just like Texas ribs, but she voted for the other guy. Oh man. Uh, and she was I from Texas. She lived in Texas for three years. I never there's, would have thought to use soapstone. There's some yeah. ribs. I cool. still I still use the um and I mentioned this I think the last time that what is you know generally referred to as the three, two, one method. Mine doesn't work out to be three, two, and one. I think it's three. Um maybe it's three. Maybe it is two, and then I think one and a half. What I have found when they normally talk about three, two, one, it's uh, at two twenty-five. For maybe it's for my grill or the way I'm doing it, I've got to get mine to more like two thirty-five, two forty. 
for three, two, one to work out. I never wrap. Oh, and what's three, two, one, Mike? So it's three hours unwrapped like this. It's two hours wrapped in aluminum foil. And when I put it in aluminum foil, I add in brown sugar. Um, um, uh, what is it? Margarine um, and honey. So I, I put all that in there and then wrap it in aluminum foil and put it back on the grill for two hours. And then that's going to make it a little soft. And then the last hour to hour and a half, it's naked back on the grill again to firm it back up. The one thing I've, I've done one of them that was literally fall off the bone. And, and that's a little too much where, you know, we're, you're taking it in a bone. You couldn't pick it out because the bone was falling off. And the, Actually, the kids and my wife like that. They said this is the best meat they've ever tasted ever. And I said, eh, I think it's a little too much because they don't want it to really fall off the bone. You want that a little bit of bite left to it. Um, so the next time I did it, I didn't. I, I turned the heat down a little bit, or I didn't do it quite as long. Other Jim is saying in the chat he gets quart buckets with lids, like you can get it to Whole Foods or other uh, ready to eat grocery stores. That's a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah. any any of those containers um uh would work just fine mark we've taken to and mike too we've taken to cooking our bacon in the oven so cookie sheet lay down some paper towels uh and then we, sarah kind of um you know she kind of stacks them up and we get them super flat they're super easy and the 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 towels absorb the grease and it really is just throw away and we don't have the smoke and we don't have the grease fat left over and it's been for when we want to do bacon for like burgers, you know, when you want a bacon double cheeseburger or whatever, right? In the oven has been a great way to do it. So mm -hmm. she's she's become a master at that. We've tried all kinds of different gadgets. We tried that white thing in the microwave yeah, that, awesome. that had all the things and you would weave it in there. We I bought a tent for the grill. You know, I've got a tent and then it's got a catch. It's got a tray on either end to catch the grease that's a mess to clean back up again and that you can really only get about four pieces four five six pieces of bacon at a time um on there and that's okay for the grill it still drips in a little bit you know and of course that catches fire pretty easily too on the with the bacon grease speaking of bacon uh, yeah speaking of bacon maybe mark can give me a tip to do this because i've tried it twice and failed both times and that Candied. is the, yeah the bacon candy um, I don't have a, I had a photo I was going to show, but I'm so disappointed in the result that I didn't want to show the photo, but both times have not come out right. I've done it twice. I've done it three times. One time ended up being a burning mess. Yep. That was uh, mine. Caught on fire. <laughs> um, one time I was able to salvage, actually the other two times I was able to salvage about 70, 50 to 75% of it. Um, Diva Q has a good recipe for it. Apparently I can't get the thing to, to, not cooking bacon on the grills as a whole is is difficult because it, it's good 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 gone like yeah. it's that that window between good and salvageable gone. and not is is very very um short so Have i you... i've tried it I, last time i did it i i used um maple syrup on it mm -hmm. and then barbecue rub and then brown sugar and i sprinkled more brown sugar on it and uh it turned out okay, but it was a lot of work for not a lot of result. Yeah. Well, we've been keeping more of the bacon grease around just for cooking. It makes great, it's a great way to lube the cast iron skillet for omelets. Uh, that's my favorite way to get, to get those things ready to go. I love cooking. We have a 12, no, we have a nine inch cast iron that I use for, for omelets. It makes a three egg omelet perfect. Every single time. There's a lot of, a lot of things I'm good at. I am good at making a, a three egg omelet with just about anything we've got in the house. So you, those are you that's can use bacon special. grease for vodka too. <laughs> really? Okay. Vodka. So tell me about that. What is that? Did it once. And if remember, this is all from memory. So I might be a little off, but you cook your bacon up, you pour it into a mason jar, you pour it in with vodka when it's still warm, you put it in the fridge, you let it slit or in the fridge or freezer. You make it cold. I can't remember if it's frozen or not. When it solidifies, you pull the fat off the jar, and the vodka that's left has a bacon scent to it. Oh. Huh. Wow. Yes. So we make things called bacon Caesars vodka. up here, which are like your Bloody Marys, but with little extra stuff in them. Yeah. And yeah. using it for that is... Well, isn't there a drink where it is a Bloody Mary, right? Does it come with a bacon stick? No. You what? can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ours, ours will have everything. And like my, my Caesar has horseradish and basil and 
bacon or um, pepperoni sticks. Well, we 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 made when we made burgers this weekend, uh, Saturday before Easter. I use the bacon. I, I I just throw it in the microwave for thirty seconds, pull it out, and then I, then re-season the grill grates with that little paper towel. Just re-season the grates real quick, and oh man, that is that is just dynamite. Did you get Did you get the grill grates that we talked about before, or are you just talking about the grates of the grill? No, no, I I have cast iron. I have really thick cast iron grill grates on my on my grill. I don't know. No, he's talking about a product called grill grates. Oh no 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 no! I'm just talking about which, the actual grates on my which grill. was. Which was this thing? Oh this no! Was back when this was back when it was brand new. Yeah, was, no, I did not get the, I didn't get that one. No, okay. season no. Mike. Yeah. What'd you say? What? What? I have cast. What yeah, did I, I call cast it? iron. <laughs> yes, it's not old. It's seasoned. Yeah, it is seasoned, and you know now I don't even have to put any kind of Pam or anything on it. It's right. it's, it's already nonstick. Yeah. As long as you got me up with that, I'll show you. Um, my favorite, one of my favorites is chicken. I love chicken. It's so easy. Mark Lasho shared with us his um, beer can type chicken device. Roaster. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, the roaster, which doesn't require you to um, uh, brine it the night before, which was what I was doing. And I used it, I've used it multiple times since then. And, it, you know, Mark was right. It is fantastic. So that is um, my favorite. And then my wife's is pulled pork. Yum. And that, that is a nice, it looks small here, but it's, it's a pretty good size pool park. And it's on those, uh, it's on those frog did, mats that we talked about before. I did pulled pork for the place I started working at last summer for 14 people. It's, it's a fairly easy thing to cook too. It's just going to take a while. Let's set it and forget it. Yeah. That's a truly, uh, a set it and forget it. Do um, you, do you inject yours or do anything with it or just season it? Every time I do it, I do it a little differently. Uh, but the only thing I stay consistent with is I use magic dust for the rub and I do it the night before. Okay. Um, but you, you mentioned something just now about, uh, there's a lot of discussion on this, but beer can chicken became a real fad about 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of discussion from people about why you shouldn't do it and why it actually, and, and actually, um, I think it was amazing ribs actually did a, a, a report on why it's actually uh, detrimental to you. But one of the main things is that the, the paint that they're putting on the outside of these cans is not necessarily designed to be ingested as fumes. Right, I, and that thing you showed us last time doesn't actually use a can. No, but just in general as a PSA, people really should be looking into, does it make sense to use a beer can in your chicken? Right, or, or you know, I've used a um, Dr. Pepper can, any kind of, you know, soft drink or beer can when you take it out, when you get done with it, and you take it off. All the paint's not left on that can, and, you yeah, know, and that makes point. you that makes you think that some of that stuff's still there. And this is the thing that Mark shared with us last time. Yeah, I bought that. two, I bought two of them and and use them, and they work fantastic. Easy cleanup too. The plug is the amazing thing. Yeah, you know, you yeah. Got a little plug, and you put it in the top, and when you pull that thing off, and you pull it out, steam just shoots out of the top yeah. of that. Um, uh, my neighbor got one and it popped the top. <laughs> he didn't put it in hard. When I did mine, I pushed it in really hard. And then the fat actually went on top of it and sealed it in. Mm. When he did his, he didn't push it in far enough. And he came back and it was missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Mark, our show, you shared last time, you put you might put some things down in the little bottom of that. So you got the, yeah. the chicken sitting on that those prongs that are sitting up. And then I put some little bitty, those russet, little bitty red potatoes. I put a bunch of those around the bottom. And those were fantastic. It's I'm, much bigger, by the way, than it looks in this right, picture. Right. Like it easily fits a chicken. It looks small, and you're like, "Oh, that doesn't look very big." You, um, that thing is actually pretty big. I mean, you could probably get enough potatoes and carrots and whatever that you want to do for four people in the in the bottom mm -hmm. of that. Um, you can stack it up and let those things cook. You know, take some take some potatoes, slice them up. Just depends how long you're going to cook it. And, and, and the what juices heat. from the chicken go into it. Right. You know, what's dynamite in that I did, I did, um, I took onions and just quartered them oh, yeah. and then set them in the bottom of that. And then I was using some, some barbecue sauce, like Heinz 57 that was dripping down in that. And then that cooked up into the onions and oh my God, that made those onions. They were like onion rings that weren't fried. Caramelized. Yeah. Almost. Oh yeah, they were. Um, that rib pitcher, uh, another point of contention for barbecuers is, is, is do you, do you wrap or do you not wrap? Right. 
So Mike just talked about, about wrapping. I've tried wrapping two or three times and I'll never do it again. And because it makes them too soft or what, what are you not like? Yeah, about the wrap? I said, that's exactly it. Um, I like, I like to be able to have some pull off my bones. Right. And I know if I do them without wrapping, I'll get that. It takes longer, but mm -hmm. the reason that they call the aluminum foil wrap the Texas crutch is because it was designed for competitions where they had to get them cooked in a certain amount of time. Right. Um, but it's personal preference. There's, there's no barbecue is the right way if you like it. So and you, and you, one thing with the wrapping, because I've done that at one time, it was fall off the bone. That was too much. It went too far. The uh -huh. next, the next, because and when you leave it in the wrap, if you leave it there too long, it will be. You know, like Mark's saying, it will be a little, a lot softer. It won't have that pull to it. Mm -hmm. um, so the next time I did it, I I didn't leave it in a wrap. I like it in a wrap when you you eat it later and you can f taste some of that honey and some of that brown sugar and everything. It just it just oh, it just tastes so good. Yeah. I love it. Um, so I I like to do the wrap, but I got to be careful with it that I don't do too much. Now we did oven. We started it. We did this for my son's birthday back in the fall, and we started it in the oven. And then brought it onto the grill, high heat, and I just smacked him for 15, you know, 10, 10 minutes, not even that, maybe got the, you know, like the reverse searing, um, mm -hmm. Mark. And so, God, those were so good. Those were pull off the bone. Like you would just pull the bone out and then yeah. we just, oh my God, it was so ribs good. Is, ribs yeah. are really tasty meat. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to try probably doing them this weekend on the, uh, on my new rec tech. Mark, I wish I, you, you, you live closer. I know. <laughs> we be over at your house all the time. I want a well, neighborhood that has barbecue competitions. Where, I want a neighborhood that has neighbor? Mark in it. <laughs> It'd be warmer down there. Could you move to Omaha? We've got a nice. So we've got a, we've got some nice neighborhoods here. It'd be good to have you down here, Mark. And not, not, not to tease have, you guys too much, but yeah. take a look at this. I'm about to share. Uh, application. Ooh, tell me about that. That was a maple mustard glazed pork wine. Mm. So it was done in the Traeger. It was done, made up with um, maple syrup, Dijon mustard, a couple other things in the sauce. I can't remember what they were. And then I think that's tarragon on top of it. And that was the first time I'd used, I think I'd just gotten my grill fixed because I had a problem with my controller. And the guy gave me a new controller and an upgraded fan. And I fired that thing up and tried it out. And that thing was, it became one of my wife's new favorites. And, uh, yeah, that was taste. That was three meals worth. Mm, yeah, that, that would, good. that, that would good. make slice that kind of thin down. And, oh man, that would look that, oof, yikes. We don't tend to slice things thin, unfortunately. Well, not, unfortunately, <laughs> it, was, it was, it was about a quarter pound of meat a person. Yeah. Pork, so it's, it's yeah. very, very lean. Right. And when yeah. he says she, she picked the wrong week to start a new diet. <laughs> <laughs> Meat is is it meat fat free? I mean, like, come on, it's not uh, pork is well cake. pork when you do a, a pork shoulder. By the time you're cooking it at 205 degrees, there's no fat left in it. It's all rendered yeah. out. It cooks down. Well, you yeah. know, sometimes it's sometimes, basically health food. Sometimes while I'm I'm smoking or grilling or whatever, I do like to have a little bit of a healthy snack. So I I might have some grapes out there with me. Nice. <laughs> and a propane torch in the background. Yeah. yeah and and it, actually, this is an older picture because you can see my old stick burner back there. It was a piece of junk. Yeah. Uh, I don't have that anymore. But yes. Yeah, you got all your. Um, that was such your... a. It was a gorgeous day. I was outside on the deck as I was grilling and, and having some nice little grapes. Oh, and it's too bad you don't drink beer. Well, I, beer I think I had a Mike's Hard Lemonade um, gotcha. out there with me. It's not in a picture. Gotcha. But that's what I had. Yeah. No, not nicely done. That's my thing is the Mike's Hard Lemonade. I like those. Uh, they're good. They're tasty. Guys, anything else as we, we think about wrapping this? I'll show one more meal we had for St. Patty's Day. It was my day that we went down to the uh, to the States to pick up the pellets. And we stopped off in the States and picked up a corned beef. Mm. Um, so that was the meat and the cabbage were all done in the grill. So that was cabbage steaks. Uh, and uh, that was a brisket when it came out. Mm. Uh, three pound brisket, uh, two and a half pounds, uh, two and a half dollars a pound with, um, I think there was more money in the sauce than there was in the actual meat. Mm -hmm. And that uh, looks delicious. Cabbage steaks delicious. with just olive oil and, and steak spice on them. Oh, well, that's a great way to do it. So they grilled I, those? I grilled those at high heat. Uh, um, so high heat's 400, sorry, 500? Those, I'm just trying to remember what. I've cooked so much lately. I'm trying to remember if those are high heat or low heat. I can put, I can send you guys a recipe for it. Okay. But it was steaks like that. And then you, yeah, it was high heat. 
So cabbage, that's is that one head of of cabbage that you've just cut in half? I uh, cut in four, yeah. four thick slices. Right, and then. But next time I would probably try quartering it or eighths okay. to try and keep the core or more of it because when I did it this way, the outside edges would just fell apart. Mm-hmm. And what, what's that, on? What you sprinkle on top? Steak spice. Steak spice. Olive oil and steak spice. Interesting. Oh, olive oil. You brush the olive oil on, or yeah. did you? Okay. Okay. And then that's what it looked like when it came in. And it was served with a warm bacon vinaigrette. Um, I found the whole recipe online. Nice. And then that was the uh, the dinner. And that tasted just like Montreal smoked meat. It was phenomenal. Nice. And then the next day, so my neighbor, we invited some, So the neighbor that I that, uh, had a competition with, we had them over for dinner all the time. And they brought over the potatoes. And the next day, I took what was left of the corned beef, what was left of the cabbage, and the potatoes, and made them all into little potato pancakes and pan fried them. Oh, nice. That was that was the next day. That was that's so uh, that strip loin steak. Yep. That was that. That was our grilled dinner. So grilled radicchio, grilled romaine, smoked beets, and the and the reverse edge steak with a wine that's local to us, one of our favorite wineries. Nice. And then that was this was Easter's nine eight and a half pound prime rib. You can get local wineries. They do they ship the grapes up there, or you can't certainly grow them up there, can you? We got forty two wineries in one region, two hours from our house. Huh. Really? Huh? We've gone down. We're going to our seventh in a couple another month and a half. We're going for our seventh year in a row to the same wine region for the same winery tour. Nice. Um, prime rib again with a a rub mixture I make for it seared at the end of it and that's after cooking for four hours and look at the color of the juice coming off of it yeah yeah, yeah. lopta says in the chat he says he should probably learn how to cook on the range indoors before he goes nuts with the outdoor grill you know uh, lopta you missed the beginning of the show i actually started with a story about uh about me cooking on cast iron steak on cast iron using gordon ramsay's uh kind of cooking with butter recipe which Super easy way to cook steaks. Just kind of season them, let them sit for a little bit, throw them in the pan, add some butter, marinate with the butter, take them out, eat, and enjoy. So that was our last Friday night, um, kind of our last Friday night meal. In fact, I had the burgers. I had a burger tonight that, that front we had done on Saturday off the grill. So just warm that thing up, and it's kind of nice to have those. Yeah, we Did that you we keep them in the freezer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, just keep them around for the week and. Re rewarm them back up, and um, you know, so I, I try not to cook them too much because I know I'm going to rewarm them up. Right. Uh, so we we try to cook extra dogs and burgers to have around for the week. We've been trying to do more of that with just the two of us now. We've been trying to do more recipes on the weekends that can give us two or three or four meals mm -hmm. during the week. We made a big pot of German potato salad with bacon, which was really great, and. Sarah fries up that bacon and it's just super delicious. And uh, I went and bought some baked beans uh, just in a container, you know, three ninety nine from the local delicatessen and uh, or the delicatessen area in one of the grocery stores. There's no delicatessens left anymore. So you had to go to the grocery store. But um, nice to have some baked beans around uh, kind of where you can spoon a few things of those out, warm them up. I, I don't mind them cold, to be honest with you. And and I'm a big fan of baked beans and in, in a in like a um, like a noodle salad or like a macaroni salad, and have those together and actually kind of mix them. Now this is gross, going to gross some people out, but I like those two together. Uh, so put them together and then just don't don't mix it, but mix them as you're eating them. Oh man, really good. We add some devil spit to our um, to our baked beans too, and that kind of gives them a little kind of gives them a little heat. Yeah, okay. Mark Nanit, you are a rec tech, part of the rec tech family. You should check out some of the rec tech uh, spices. So this is this is my part of my collection and my favorite. I love the the one there. It says steakhouse rub. We put that on our steaks. Uh, first time we did it was when my wife and I were out uh, at a cabin, you know, for a weekend, and we put that on there, and it was just fantastic. And then came home that you know later that uh weekend and did another one at home and with that stuff same stuff and that's of the whole of all the rec tech stuff i like that one the best the barbecue sauce is a little thin if you like the thinner a little more liquid sauce then theirs is good the hot one uh i don't know what it is i grew up in louisiana i could i could drink tabasco but now for whatever reason at my age 
hot things are starting to get became hotter for whatever reason. Um, so I like the one in the black top that's not quite as hot of, of the of that. I find that I'm not sure I bought the same other than stubs, which I sort of I use as a base for other stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think I bought the same sauce or rub more than once. I'm always trying different ones. Um, like right now, I've got five or six dizzy pigs. Um, I picked up another one last weekend from the from my cooking class. It was a jerk rub. Uh, like the, my the barbecue store I'm going to taking these classes, and they have wall literally walls of sauce and rubs. Yeah. Um, but I started out making my own. So I would go online and, and my pulled pork, I use a Big da big Daddy's Carolina style barbecue sauce for it, like a really tangy, vinegary. And that's my, my go-to. Every time I do pulled pork, I, I if I'm doing it at home, I'll make my own uh, barbecue sauce for it. And it just, it blows away anything I've ever had in, in, a, in a bottle. Okay. And it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time to do it. And, right. But uh, and it, it's fun. You were given a uh, lot a little uh, little advice in the chat room about uh, large trout. Could I could I do a salmon that way? Could I put salmon on a board, low heat, and smoke for three or four hours and get it up to the right temperature and do it that way? I think so. I haven't done it. Um, that was actually a fresh salmon that they caught filleted or caught cleaned and froze, and then thought it out for think for a Thanksgiving weekend, and we cooked it for five hours on a smoker I'd never used before. Yeah, but it turned out it was pretty delicious. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing, right? You're just trying to get it up to a temperature. Yeah, right? and, and a fish tend to be easier to do, safer to do than a pork or salmon, I or pork or um, chicken. I think. Like we cooked this thing. I don't think it probably got above 250 degrees for the five hours we cooked it. Right. Did but you temperature sense it? Did you check temperature on that before you pulled it off, or no? We just flaked it. Okay. Uh, it makes sense. It was it was a thing called a uh, I think they call it a master craft smoker. It has no bottom panel. It's got no. It's not sealed at all. The the, the bottom is out, is open to the outside, and it's got a bowl of charcoal that sits in the middle of it. And the pain was you had to go and stir the coals every half hour. Um, there's no air control. There's no there's no controls on it at all. You just sort of. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I need to try. I, I want to try my own salmon that way. I think that's something we're going to do this summer, where I want to try and figure out how to do salmon right. Uh, on for your us. Weber, get your Weber and yeah. and just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. If you want to do smoking, that's the easiest way to get into it. Right. Buy one for fifty bucks. Right. Pay twenty five dollars in accessories for it. Go right. and get the wood chunks you want. Like if you're something like a salmon, you're going to want something light like an alder or I think an oak or a, and there's also a church you can get on what woods go to what, uh, right. what food, but um, set up for offset, put a water pan in the bottom of it and just let the thing go for right. an afternoon. Let it go. Yeah. 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 I have to, I have to monkey around with it. I'm going to, I'm going to go pick up a web or something. Maybe. But it's fun to play with. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right on. Um, and maybe practice on hot dogs, <laughs> you know, right. Uh, Chicken yeah. wings. Throw some dogs in there. Oh, chicken wings are awesome. Chicken wings. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Because you know, yeah, it's something I don't necessarily want to waste till I figure out. Because it's all about temperature management, right? Right. At the yeah. end of the day, and on the Weber, yeah. there's two forms. If you're going to be using it like that, there's two ways you got to get your temperature down. One is going to be grilling, just burgers, dogs, stuff like that, right. and the other way is offset. Right. So that's what you want to do offset, whether it's smoking or whether it's higher offset. Like if I'm doing chicken wings, I do it at a higher temperature. Uh, I'm still doing offset because I don't want my chicken wings dropping the grease onto the fire. Right. So I cook it. Do you it put your fire in the middle or do you push your fire no. to the side and put the one wings side. in the middle? Okay, one so side. I, I, Got it. Two interlock bricks or two interlock pavers, push it all the way to one side until it, there, it only leaves about five inches of gap. Yeah. I can take pictures if you pick one up and I'll show you how no, to do they it. Make, they make trays for that too, for the Weber, right? That They make be... one. Uh, there's, there's a couple of, of smoking adapters for them. They want about 100 bucks for them. Okay. Um, yeah, one hold a water the pan. Pavers are seventy nine cents at Menards. <laughs> That's exactly it. And I had them. I had a bunch of them hits in here, so I was just put them to the side. I'm like, I'll try yeah. these, see if they explode. And I've been using them for years now. No, oh, that's a good way to do it. That's a good. That's a good way indeed. All right, I have to try. And so wings on one side, and then when what do you what what are you trying to get with the with, like with wings in in your smoking? How long and what kind of temperature am I shooting for? Yeah, inside temperature. Uh, 
I end up doing my wings typically to 190, even though they're done at 160. Okay. But as long as they're still juicy, I don't care. Yeah. And how, how often do you uh, go out and, and rebase them? Uh, typically, I do them dry because my wife likes them dry. Oh, I do, I do too. Oh, and I only dry. flip them once, about halfway through. I okay. Them. So no, nothing on them, maybe a little rub, throw them yeah. in, get them cooked, bring them in, soak them or whatever. If you're going to. If you're going to use them them. sauce, I could get some Buffalo Wild Wings. I love their their Blue Moon barbecue or the Red Hot Buffalo sauce, barbecue. something like that. Yeah, yeah, and then and then get them extra wet. We really like them extra wet, so we could or just... or take them off. And I've done this before with my um, my moink balls. Uh, one last picture here. Um, so the that was my first attempt at chicken drumsticks and moink balls and the balls on top are meatballs wrapped in bacon dusted with barbecue powder mm. cooked until they're almost done then you take them all off and you dip them in barbecue sauce and put them back on the grill again so it caramelizes so they're sticky like they're they're so they were done yeah. after the, they were sauced after they're done cooking and you, you put them on high heat to sear them is that the nope. okay just the nope, still them on that. at three at three three hundred degrees 275 okay. Just until that sauce gets kind of thick. Yeah, thick yeah. and sticky. Yeah. And they were, that was, we, there's a thing up here called an instant pot, which is uh, yeah. like an electric um, pressure cooker. Yeah. So yeah. it was invented down the road from my house. Um, so my neighbor has one and he said, we're going to do barbecue. We're going to do ribs tonight. And I said, if we're having ribs and not in the barbecue, I'm going to bring them over some barbecue just so I have some. <laughs> and uh, I brought those over. That's funny. That's and funny. they disappeared pretty quick. Yo, I'm sure they did. I am sure they did. Well, lots of ideas. We've, we're going to have a bunch of links in the show notes. Uh, some stuff we did. We're not, I'm not going to get everything in the show notes. But guys, if you if we talked about something and I didn't get it in the show notes, if you take maybe tonight or tomorrow or whatever and get those in the show notes for me, that'd be helpful. We have on that shared doc. So um, that'd be awesome. I'll try and add in that chicken roaster as well. That's just 30 bucks on, yeah. on Amazon right now. Yeah, so and easy not, to use. Yeah, yeah, super easy to use. And easy clean it. Mike, what have you used? Did you just, did you put beer in there when, when you did your? No, I I food? put um, put some butter. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I think I put like maybe applesauce or something like that, okay. and then you know some whatever seasoning I'm using, I right. put that in there too. Yeah, uh, it's it's super easy and yeah. uh, super good. We don't use it enough. I need to use a bunch of it this uh, this summer and get it done, but. Good, uh, good stuff tonight. As always, if you don't, if you listen to this and you don't walk away hungry, there's a problem. So lots of great stuff that we talked about tonight and, and lots of good links in the show notes. So head, head over to the average guy.tv slash HGG three, five, zero, lots of good stuff. Of course, both Mike and Mark, uh, good friends of home gadget geeks out there in the chat room all the time. Mike, Mark, thanks for coming back on. Always good to have you for our, our annual. Do we do this? Uh, is, is it annual or sub or semi-annual? What are annual? Is it annual? It's in the spring. I think uh, we've had it. I think the first one was late season because you've only found out about it in the in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're spring in spring. Like now. a good time. So, it's yeah. it's yeah it's it's good. We've got three of these. If you want to go back and hear the other ones, there's I think there's three more. Uh, of those back. So, so good stuff. Um, if you want to, no, no post show tonight, I mean, we were going to hang around for a few minutes, but no, but no post show tonight. Don't forget uh, all the post show. If you're into the crypto stuff we've been doing, Mike and I have been talking a lot about crypto. It's on our Patreon page last week's show, which was all crypto available for free. Just head out there, the average guy TV slash support. And I think I got the average guy TV slash Patreon working as well. So you can head out there uh, last week's show and post show, which was, I thought was pretty cool. We got some good feedback on it available out there on patreon oh i was going to read the patreon supporters let me do that really quick because this is always a good time we got a few of them here uh but but uh, everybody who supports the show brian hour amar riggins nathaniel linnelly chad davis emily prokop out there right now host of the story behind kevin and kevin put his last name so i'm not going to read it chris brown uh gavin campbell ryan kirshner jonathan hill Jay Cleveland Payne, Chad Johnson, Mark Robson. There you go, Mark. Thank you for your sponsorship here. Trevor Stevens, John Larson, Paul Brerin, Michael Ray, John Biggs, Ed Ramirez, Justin Simmons, Dennis Pillow, uh, Mike Schell, Dwayne Johnson, Peter Dennett, Dennett. I can never pronounce his name right, Peter. I'm sorry. Mike Weger, Jim Shoemaker, Malcolm Lacey, Eric Janowski, and, of course, Steve Sleeper over at the North 
Omaha podcast. One of my favorite podcasts to listen to about North O. Uh, we guys appreciate your, your Patreon support. Thanks for doing that as well. A dollar gets you in and all the post-show stuff. Uh, if you want to catch up on all that, uh, and it's a dollar a month, not too bad. You can also send me an email, Jim at the average TV, track me down on Twitter at Jay Collison. I'm pretty active on Twitter. If you want to contact me that way, it's a good way to do it. But Tony Rainer is the best tweeter of all time. So if you're on Twitter, you got to follow Tony. He is really funny and uh, some good tweets. And of course, Rich Hay is out there doing some great stuff. And Dave McCabe is out there. So if you're not on Twitter yet, you might want to check it out. Uh, some good stuff going on out there. The Average Guy TV platform, both web hosting and, and uh, web hosting and media hosting, powered by Maple Grove Partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know and trust. And of course, you know that's Christian. He's going to be on back for Cyber Frontiers next week, so we're going to record one of those. We'll have a new Cyber Frontiers for you out there as well. And he's been super busy at work and should be. He's a smart kid, so. Uh, he is coming up as well. Don't forget, you can catch Home Gadget Geeks both Andro- uh, both on Android and the iPhone app. It's available, f- and it's really the best way to listen to us live. You can catch that. The easiest way to do that is just download it from HomeGadgetGeeks.com. That's the easiest way to do it. Thank LastPass for the sponsorship of that. Um, and, of course, it's available for free for you. Thank LastPass, and uh, we appreciate their sponsorship. T-shirts are still available, theaverageguy.tv slash shirt. I wore it on Saturday to ask the podcast coach. You can still get them out there if you want to get that. I think they're 18 bucks, Pretty cheap. One final announcement. Uh, we were going to try and do a meetup in the fall, and it's just not in the cards this year. I just could not get it pulled off with the uh, location and the planning. I have a wedding this summer. Just not going to be able to pull it off. So the good news is I'll start working on next year's early. <laughs> See if I can get ahead of it. The first one is the hardest one to do. That's a big deal. Uh, it was just super hard to get everything pulled together and I could not get all the timing together and I'm, and it's late, it's already April and I wanted to do it in September. So, uh, we're going to start doing some other things. So if you were hanging on that for that, hang tight, we'll do one. We'll go around next year, uh, figure it out that way. See if we can get, uh, if, if we do it in September, maybe we could do a big grill. Uh, we could maybe get some grill sponsorship and get some grills out of Uyghur's place and we'll just grill. All Friday night, awesome. we'll all be grilling. That would be that would be great, wouldn't it? Just have some meats ready and just grill and eat and drink. It'll be great. So, we are live every Thursday, just about every Thursday. I guess that's when we meet at night Eastern out the average guy slash live. For those joining us live, thanks for coming out. Uh, we'll do a little bit of post show. It won't make any kind of we won't do anything with it. But with that, we'll say good night.